the right. Dean Lerman. hook it up with anything too edgy or controversial. So I've been thinking a lot about Adolf Hitler lately. Um, I've been uh, reading his autobiography, uh, Mein Kampf. I, I kind of bought it by accident because uh, in English it means my struggle and I saw it on eBay and thought it was a self-help book <laughs> in which all of the instructions are invade Poland. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, a, I'm an English student. Uh, I do English and uh, classics and trivia. And, um, I they basically um, I re realize it's just a really badly written book. The prose is awful. Like the, the grammar is really clunky. It breaks off in the middle of sentences. And I realize this makes a lot of sense because um, Adolf Hitler would kind of speak the vague idea of every chapter out, and somebody else would write it down for him. And I think this is you know gives us a lot of clarity because if history has taught us anything, it's that uh, Adolf Hitler was a terrible dictator. <laughs> Exists, and you can have it for free. You may notice I'm a, I'm a bit trembly. This is the first uh, comedy competition I've actually ever done. Um, but when I'm in situations like this, I just remember it's as my dad used to say. Like, I don't know if any of you ever saw it, it was this Coca-Cola ad where the guy goes, gets out a bottle of Coke with the girl he likes, and he goes, It's for you. Um, the, the ending that that had in the script I wrote was, It's for you. <laughs> yeah, this is Mary. It's, it's spread to her what? <laughs> Inoperable. <laughs> right. Uh, how much... Time does uh, she have left? Okay. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll try to be strong. I'm sitting down. Yeah. And then a uh, little subtitle would say, "Look on the coke side of life." <laughs> and then it's crossed out and says death. <laughs> uh, like another thing that really pissed me off is when ads kind of condescend to the viewer. Like there was this one that was in the cinemas a while back where the guy goes, um, uh, "It was a visual impairment ad," and the guy said, uh, "Listen, uh, close your eyes and just listen," and you just hear this. Sound as if there's a big football game going on. He says, People with visual impairments don't want to just hear the action second hand. They want to live it. No, they want to see. <laughs> and it's got, got even worse. It's just like, uh, for people like us, it's not just in black and white. Well, no, it's nothing. You're fucking blind. <laughs> um, like, as I go through college, there was um, something you'll start to realize is uh, you see your parents in a different way. You, you, you realize that they're not just someone who raised you, they're someone with their own hopes, their own fears, who had their own struggles. And, you know, they sometimes slip up and make mistakes. And I realized this when I was about to get my wisdom teeth out. I was saying, Mom, I have a gig coming up. I'm not sure if I can write some good material. And she said, Ian, listen, calm down. A gig is a gig. It's not the end of the world. And besides, I'm sure you can write some funny jokes about looking like a chipmunk after the surgery. And uh, when my mum made that joke, I, I, I had one of those realizations that uh, parents just have their own path to tread. Because I realized that uh, dad probably had quite a good reason to walk out in the end. Uh, Yeah, something, um, I, uh, I, I do quite a lot of history as a hobby, and um, something you run into a lot is the phrase puppet dictatorship. It kind of refers to the idea that there's a monarch or a tyrant on the throne that serves the interest of a third party, generally America, if we're looking at early modern times. Um, but the problem is, when I read uh, puppet dictator, the main image that springs to mind is uh, Kermit the Frog dressed as Hitler. <laughs> Remain indoors. <laughs> 
the soldiers are here for your own safety. Please use the gas masks provided. Say hi. I got to use Microsoft Word quite a lot now as an English student, and uh, I remember uh, you know, Microsoft Word just really bugs me. It's the, the green lines of death, they're always telling you what to do. Uh, I remember like I was doing uh, an essay for Hamlet, and there's that quote that the ghost, ghost father says, like, with juice of cursed heaven on it, a vile poison, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then it came out in spell check as, with juice of cursed hobnob in a vile. <laughs> So it's it's not only it's not only a pain in the ass. It's also ignorant. And it's it's just very creepy. It's like having like this, you know, really kind of maudlin. It's like having Alan Rickman standing behind you while you're typing. It just. Mm. <laughs> that sentence looks fragmented. <laughs> you may want to consider revising it. <laughs> Okay, yeah, sorry, Alan. <laughs> uh, there's no you in color. <laughs> I think there is, Alan. Do not disappoint me. <laughs> sorry. But um, I'm not afraid to say now, the relationship was becoming abusive. And the one thing that keeps me awake, I can accept that it was abusive, but the one thing that keeps me awake at night is the fact that the paper clip just stood there and watched. <laughs> And I knew I had to walk out when I was doing a, hit, a bit of a history thing for the leaving search. I typed in Fianna Fáil, and it came out in spell check as Fianna Fáil. And it's like, it got so political, so quickly. Like, I knew, like, I can't type objectively anymore. I knew I was just going to say, like, you know, Sally went to the shops, and it would come out, that bitch killed Bobby Sands. <laughs> Listen, uh, you've been a wonderful crowd. I'll tell you one more story before I go. Um, when I was a child, uh, my mom always told me this place uh, on O'Connell Street where I live in Dublin uh, called Dr. Quirky's Funtime Emporium. It's uh, where you can, you know, gamble, you can play arcade games and everything. And my mom said, Ian, never go to Dr. Quirky's because it's full of pedophiles. And I then realised in later days when I was in college, I said, oh, well, obviously it's full of pedophiles. They started laughing. And I realised that she lied to me so I would never take up gambling. <laughs> She told me there was pedophiles there. And I thought, God, all these years, all these years, I really need to make up for lost time. So I'll tell you now, Limerick. I went down to O'Connell Street, walked into Dr. Quirky's, I went up to those slot machines, and I molested the fuck out of them. <laughs>